JC had the ability to execute incredible feats of choreography that were impossible and difficult with a seemingly endless amount of energy. There were precious moments when a compliment from Tony, fellow dancers, family, and myself, he would show the smallest smile of satisfaction and I treasured those times because it gave an indication that he had experienced a small portion of the joy and excellence he brought to others. What seemed so easy for JC to those who observed him was in fact a daily struggle of his self-imposed demand for perfection. I have never seen a dancer work harder than he did and I was incredibly privileged to observe not only his power and grace but to share in a life outside of dance and to experience and understand another layer of his being that will always remain with me. My first experience with Juan Carlos was when my ballet master, Peter Polition, mentioned a young man who was at Boston Ballet and studying there, and he suggested that I hire this young man. He was barely 18, fresh out of school, lots of energy, lots of commitment. That first year, I particularly remember one experience with him. We were doing a new ballet, Three Musketeers, and he had so much energy that I thought he would be great as one of the Three Musketeers. And I choreographed this little section with the Three Musketeers playing tennis. Well now, Three Musketeers means two against one. And it just seemed ideal for me to have JC as the one. And as I choreographed this imaginary tennis match, I gave JC more and more to do physically as I gave less and less for the other two combatants uh, to dance against him. The more I gave him to do, the bigger his grin got and the more he ate it up. He loved to dance. And that's what JC was all about, knocking it out of the ballpark. I was about 15 years old when I first met JC at a summer intensive. And it was our first men's class. And he was teaching me what a double cabriole was, which at the time meant nothing to me. And uh, when I finally realized what he was asking me to do, I, I looked at him puzzled. And I was like, sorry, man, I don't think I could do that one. And I was like, come on, Jesse, it's, it's not that hard. And, I remember he just went for it, didn't let me even reply. He took three huge steps and boom, a double cabriole right in front of me and that's all it took, I was sold. This guy was my hero and I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to be JC. My name is Yoshie Oshima. I had the privilege of being Juan Carlos's partner during my first few years as a principal with Eugene Ballet. I danced two of my favorite ballet with him. Romeo and Juliet, and Swan Lake. He always put my knees as a dancer before his own and told me a great things about what it means to be a principal dancer. Working so closely with Jay-Z gave me insight into the true artist he was and the hard work he brings to each and every role he danced. I danced with JC for 10 years, but I think what I miss most about him was his presence in the studio. He was such a character. He, he really uh, ran the gamut from being so serious or really silly in the studio. Um, on, on the one hand, he uh, had such an insane work ethic. He would always give 110% for everything that he did, even if he was tired or if he was in pain. He never let it show, and I think Everyone that worked with him, worked alongside him, picked up on that and it helped us all grow as artists. And then on the other side, he was basically the class clown. If you were having a bad day, he'd grab you by the ankle and just drag you all over the studio to make you laugh. Or if um, you were missing some warm-ups, you couldn't find your sweatshirt or your leg warmers, you'd at first get a little worried and then <laughs> that you'd lost them and then you'd remember that JC had probably taken them just to be silly and goofy. And you'd look over, find him in the studio, and he would be wearing all of your things, which was especially funny if it was 
my pink leg warmers or somebody's purple jacket. So he, he was so in love with ballet that he, he was both serious and passionate about it, but also had fun with it. And I think it, it helped everyone that worked with him have a good time in the studio and work hard. The Juan Carlos I knew had serious ballet technique. From gyroscopically controlled pirouettes to enormous light jumps to intricate battery, he was in possession of one powerful bit of technique. And he also possessed something else that uh, a lot of people took great joy in, that was his humor. I remember one day in the studio, he was chatting with somebody and they didn't realize that surreptitiously he'd tied their shoes together. So when they got up, oh, a surprise. That also related to him as a performer. He was a wonderful puck in Midsummer Night's Dream, always playing tricks, and it worked out beautifully in performance. He always took great joy in dance, and I can remember that impish smile that would charm us all. Great man. JC was exciting. He exuded charisma. He would light up the stage. With his small stature, he made an enormous impact, both as a performer and as an individual. I loved him. He was brilliance and beauty. Sometimes there's a very particular connection between conductor and performer, and I felt that extraordinary, magical connection with JC. Every time JC danced, he would draw me into the beauty of his art and his artistic life within. And I will forever be grateful for that.